All right, ladies and gents, back to it. Lesson two, here we go, number gem. Hop, skip, splash. Ooh, five, 15, looks like 25, and then 35. Going up by tens. Fourteen, twenty-four, thirty-four, forty-four, fifty-four. Up by tens again. One more, I'll do it here. Oh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That one's just counting. <laughs> All right, I'll let you guys do these. These seem pretty easy. All right, so number gym was pretty easy. Uh, the last one, if you have the same as me, be prepared. Two separate lines, two different number lines. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, let's try to blast here. Fifteen questions. Get ready. Blast off. Twenty. Now look, this is going to be the I'm multiplying, so the number needs to get bigger. That means my decimal point has to go one place to the right. That's two. Same thing here, one place to the right. 22. 30. 3. 33. 40. 4. 44, 50, 5, 55, 70, 7. Remember, just moving that decimal point one place to the right there because I'm multiplying. Number needs to get bigger. Decimal point needs to go to the right. 77. Same thing here. Decimal point one place to the right, but the decimal point's already right here, so it has to go one more. It means I need to add a zero. That's 10. 1, 11, 80, 88, 20, 2, 22, 90, 9, 0.9, Forty four. All right, the actual lesson time. We have a little sip of this here. Here we go. Digital dance. Okay. Hi, Zerner. Hello. Ms. Biso here. Today's lesson is a learning lab. In learning labs, we'll explore mathematical ideas and get lots of practice. Sweet. There are no notes for this lab. Let's get started with a warm up. Sweet. Let's use the place value chart to help us multiply and divide. We'll start with 367. First, show 367 on the place value chart. 367. It'll be 367. Three hundred sixty seven has three hundreds, six tens, and seven ones. Now I'll multiply and move each digit one place value to the left. 
What did I multiply 367 by? Choose which expression matches the place value chart. Okay, so she moved them one place to the left. That means it got one place value bigger. That means I need one zero. Okay, now I said we were going to stop today and do it my way, but I think I'm just going to explain my way within this. So my way multiplying by 10, we would just have to move this decimal point one place to the right. So the decimal point would be here. Well, then we need a number here. What number would we put there? Well, a zero. It's the same thing they did. They just moved their numbers. I just moved my decimal. It's the same thing. And actually, as I thought about it, I think I kind of like their way better because we know it's going to get 10 times bigger. So that means the numbers all have to move one place value over to the bigger side, right? Left to the bigger side. So we went from hundreds to thousands. It's still 367, but now I just have to add a zero. That's all. Anytime you multiply a number by 10, that's all you do is add a zero at the end. Anyway, we should probably, probably know that one. If you don't, there it is. So 367 times 10 is 3,670. Let's go back to 367. This time, I'll move each digit one place value to the right. What did I divide 367 by? Choose which expression matches the place value chart. Okay, again, ladies and gentlemen, this time the number is getting smaller. Since we only went one place value over, we went from the ones to the tenths, we moved over to the right one. That means we need one zero, okay? If it would have moved two places, then I'd need two zeros. If it would have moved three places, which would be out here somewhere, no, it would be here, I'm sorry, I would need three zeros. But I only moved one place. I got one uh, tenth smaller, right? That's what I did because I went from 367 to 36.7. So I divided, I got a smaller number, I moved it over one place value, that means one zero, 10. So that's 36.7. 367 times 10 equals 3,670. 367 divided by 10 equals 36 and 7 tenths. In both of these problems, the digits stayed the same, but their values have changed. Let's look at the 3 in 367. It represents 300. When we multiplied 300 by 10, it shifted one place value to the left and became 3,000. That's 10 times as large as 300. When we divided 300 by 10, it shifted one place value to the right and became three tenths. That's one tenth as large as three hundredths. Try another one. All right, I'm going to pause it here and I'm going to let you guys try this one. Okay, ladies and gents, this one they want me to multiply by 100. So I need to get bigger because I'm multiplying. So that means my numbers are going to have to go here from the hundreds to the thousands or to the ten thousands. How many places over does my number need to move? Well, how many zeros do I have? Two zeros. So that means this two has to move over two places. One, two. So I'd have a two here. Then I'd have a one here. Then I'd have a five here. Then I'd have a six here. And I have nothing left to put here, so what do I have to put? A zero. Awesome. Same deal here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm dividing by 100. That means my number is going to have to get smaller, so I'm not going to be in the hundreds anymore. I might be in the tens. I might be in the ones. I might be in the tens. I have to move my numbers this way now. How many places? Well, two zeros means I move two places, so one, two. So that means I need a two here. Then a decimal point would come next. Then what number would go, I'm sorry, I need a two here, decimal point. What will go here? The one would go here. Then a five, then a six. All right, I'm going to let you guys try a few. Okay, time for a little bit of mine, ladies and gentlemen. If you look at the screen, you'll see. 
I'm multiplying by 100. So that means I need to move this decimal to the right so my number would get bigger. Because if I move it one place, I go from 3.7 to 37. But I have to move it two places. So I'd be at 37. I have to move it one more place. That means I need to add a zero there. So I would be 37, then add a zero, 370. See what I did there? My decimal point was here, right? 3.7. I need to move it two places. So one, two, my decimal point is now there. Probably going to do a division one here too. Right. So now my decimal is going to move the other way two places because I have two zeros. So it's going to go 0.37. Well, I need to go one more. So what would I put there? I need to add a zero. So it would be 0 0.037. All that happened here is my decimal was here. I moved it to the left two places because I have two zeros. So one. Two. I had to add that zero to be able to move it to second place. Okay, now I'm multiplying by a thousand. So I'm multiplying, my number is going to get bigger. That means my decimal needs to go this way from 0.4 to 4.8 to 48 point something to 482 possibly. How many places does my decimal have to move? One, two, three, three zeros. So it goes one, two, three places. That would be zero, 482, but we don't really put the zero. So we just put 482. My decimal point is now. There, moved three places. One, two, three. See what I'm saying? It was here. One, two, three places it moved. So my number would get, excuse me, when I want my number to get bigger, the decimal point has to go to the right. I'm sure we're going to have a division one here now. Right. So this one, again, key is where is the decimal point in a number that doesn't show you the decimal point? It's always after the number. So the decimal point is here after the two. Pretend it's there. Okay. And I have to move it to the left because I'm dividing. I want my number to get smaller. How many places? Three places. So I'm here. I need to go one, two, three. And now my decimal will be before the four, 0. 0.482. So my decimal was there where my cursor's blinking. I moved it three places to the left. One, two, three. Because when I'm dividing, I want my number to get smaller. So the decimal has to go to the left to get smaller. How many places? Three places. See, this is my way of doing it. And we don't have to visualize any charts or anything. Now, if you're doing better visualizing the chart, feel free. Do it that way. Okay? Wait a second. Oh, 0.482. What do I, I got 488. What am I doing? Point four eight two, not four eight eight. Same thing though, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, I put the wrong number in there. But where my cursor is blinking is where my decimal used to be. And then one, two, three places over. Why three places over? Because I have three zeros. Put the right number in there and it helps. <laughs> All right, earned it. I think, ladies and gentlemen, since I did all of these for you. I'm going to let you do the power tower on your own. Um, if I see anything real tough, I'll come back. But this may be it. I'm going to pause it for now. Maybe I'll stop for a shortcut here. Look, this is 485 times 1,000. This way, I don't even have to think about the decimals. I just need to add one, two, three zeros to 485. So I have 485 and then three zeros. Don't forget, you could always do that. Multiplying by 10 adds one zero. Multiplying by 100 adds two zeros. Multiplying by 1,000 adds three zeros if you don't have any decimal points visible. All right, so that was it for me for the power tower. Okay, ladies and gents, so I hope that my way helps you a little bit. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to see. It looked like people did pretty good yesterday. So as long as people do pretty good on lesson two today, that'll probably be all of my way you have to see. Maybe you like their way better. Um, I don't know. Whichever way is more comfortable for you, do that way. Okay, Whichever way gets you the right answers. As always, if you have any questions, I will be at the meet and ready to go. So see you guys later.